is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are Ohio. Offense has been tough to come by in this series. And last night it was one hit in the second inning that led to a Mariners win. The story today is who can break out the crooked numbers. Cody Anderson will try to keep the M's in the middle of their order on ice while trying to maintain his cool. Next on Sports Time Ohio. Steel gray skies in downtown Cleveland. A light rain has been falling, but we're going to start on time as the Indians and the Mariners put their wraps on a three game series here at Progressive Field. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Coming into last night, the Mariners had lost 14 of their last 15 games when held to three hits or less, but they channeled their inner Lloyd Christmas and said, <laughs> So you're telling me there's a chance? Well, they won their second one run ball game last night and it came out one base hit early in the ball game. Aoki hits a ball ball down the right field line it goes as a triple it drives in both runs for Seattle on that game and I'll tell you what not much clutch hitting going on in this series you can see the Mariners scored four runs same as the Indians they have nine hits but one for 16 with runners in scoring position the Indians on the other hand they've out hit them but only two for 15 they scored four runs so you know the pitchers have dominated. Speaking of pitchers Cody Anderson will go for the tribe this afternoon victimized by the long ball in his last start against the New York Mets. Well it's all about location for Cody when you look at some of the spots he can hit here with his change up down and away excellent location he can get strikeouts get him to hit it on the ground when he makes mistakes he will give up the long ball and they hit three of them the last time out so this is his first start against the Seattle Mariners he's going to be matched up against another right hander Nathan Carnes who's five and two on the road in his career one and one against the Indians both those starts coming in the 10 days of last year. He won the first one, lost the second one. This guy's a fly ball pitcher. We'll see if the Indians can maybe get a couple up into the mist and hit him out of the ballpark. Well, you talk about a road warrior. In his last six road games, Nathan Carnes has given up seven earned runs total. We all know Francisco Lindor has made a huge impact for the Indians on the field. When we come back, Andre Knott will tell us what Lindor is doing off the field as well. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. And by your local Toyota dealers, visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places.
And we're just about ready for baseball today in downtown Cleveland. We know Francisco Lindor can pick it. We know he can hit it. We know he can throw it. He can do just about everything on the field. But what's he doing to make an impact off the field? Let's go down to Andre with more on that story. Well, Matt, one of the first signs that we saw of what Francisco Lindor wants to do off the field, we saw last week in Tampa where he brought his whole high school to the game, basically his whole high school baseball team to the game so they could see him up close and personal. Yesterday it came out that he wants to help underprivileged children, not only here in Cleveland, but everywhere the Indians go on the road, as we'll be in Philadelphia, and he'll make one of his first starts where he'll go out and help out and do camps with underprivileged kids. For Francisco, he says he's been helped throughout his career, and he just wants to give the same thing back to the community. Coming up um, in high school, I, no one really went back to my high school, uh, baseball player-wise, and uh, to 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 inspire us. And I, now that I'm in this position, I feel like I can help the kids. You know, plus I train over there in Mumbra Academy. I do everything over there, and uh, just being around the kids, just helping them, just. Is them seeing me, talking to them. I don't. I don't get in their way a lot. I sometimes, you know, I practice with them. I'll do infield, outfield with them, just so, just to make sure they're doing it right. You know, I, they sometimes they're a little bit sloppy. Sometimes they're not. You know, I, I told them it's all about consistency. You got to be consistent. You can't. I know you can throw the ball to the chest. I know you can do it. Why not doing it? nine or eight times out of ten you know instead of doing it three out of ten i know you can catch the ball why not why not doing it most of the time i i, I know they're gonna make mistakes um we all make mistake i make a lot of mistakes all the time so just being around the kids just trying to help them talking to them and uh giving back you know i i'm big on that i want to like i said a lot of people helped me throughout my career and they're still helping me right now and uh why not? Why not give back? I think accessibility is a, is a really important aspect in, in today's life. I don't know about you. I'm sure it's the same. When I was a kid, I never had a chance to be close to a major league ball player or be right. in an opportunity or a setting where you had a chance to interact with someone. So for him to go and get involved, I think it's awesome. I, I, I do too. And you know what he strives for? Perfection. That's why he's a major league player. And I mean, it, it, it should show kids out there, you can do it, but you have to concentrate, you have to practice. If you want to be good, you have to work at it and be the become the best. And I'll tell you what, this kid's off to a great start in his career. Cody Anderson and the Indians take the field. Cody trying to get on track, looking for his first win of the year. And the Indians trying to push their record back over that 500 mark once again. The starting lineup for the Seattle Mariners for manager Scott Service looks like this. Nori Aoki will lead it off. Seth Smith batting second. Robinson Cano is third. So the three left-handed hitters stay at the top of the order for the Mariners. The lone right-hander in the lineup today is Nelson Cruz. He'll bat cleanup. Then it's Kyle Seeger, Adam Lynn, Leonis Martin, Steve Clevenger, and Cattell Marte. And today's Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher, Cody Anderson for the Indians. He is 0-1 on a 591 earned run average. His last start against the Mets, he went four and two-thirds innings. He gave up nine hits, five runs, five earned runs, but gave up three home runs. They were getting after the fastball early. And for Cody on the year, with nobody on base, He's uh, giving up a 440 average with three home runs, and the Mets did most of that. But when runners get on, he's been very good. This will be his first start against Seattle in his career. So uh, we'll see what he has to offer. He watched uh, Carrasco Salazar go after this lineup, and uh, they were very successful. So we'll see if he can attack it the same way. Let's set the defense behind him. Brought to you by Jeep. Davis gets a start in left field. Naquin in center. Chisholm back in right. Ramirez will start at third. Lindor at short. Kipnis at second. Santana gets a start at first base today. And Perez behind the plate. Lance Barksdale calling the balls and strikes. Jeff Kellogg, the crew chief, will be at first base. Alan Porter at second. John Tumpane down at third. And the winner of this game will win the series. The Indians would love to win this series at home. Well, especially because they won't be home until the month of May right. now. After today's game, the tribe will head out for a nine-game, ten-day road trip. And we start getting back into our division. We get to go to Detroit and Minnesota before we play another interleague series in Philadelphia. Nori Aoki will lead it off. 
Aoki one out of eight that one hit. We talked about it enough. It was a big two run triple last night. Anderson's first pitch is in the dirt for ball one. Yeah the Mariners as a team have two triples and Aoki has both of them. And a foul right back to the screen one and one. Chopper towards second big hop for Jason Kipnis and he'll flip it over one away. Taking a look at it, the keys to the game for Cody Anderson keep it down in the zone. And the clutch hitting. Will it return today. That sort of holds true for both teams. Pitching has dominated in the series. Seattle has been very good in their last five games not allowing anybody to score. Now Seth Smith. He's gone one for six in the series. Scott Service in his first year as a manager in Seattle. Smith swings through it, and it's one on one. One one pitch is out of play on the left side. The Mariners this year. Away from home, they've done a decent job. They're scoring just under five runs a ball game at 4.8. They're 242 average. At home, they're under two runs, 1.8 and a 170 average. So they haven't fared well in their own ballpark. But from here, they'll go to LA and play the Angels for three before they head home. Down and in two and two. Seattle two games under 500, but only two and a half games out. In the AL West, Texas leads the division with a mark of nine and six. They've won their last three. Oakland is right behind them at eight and seven after the A's have reeled off four straight wins. Now the 2 2. Weakly <laughs> tapped, and that's going to be a base hit. Yes, indeed. With the shift on, no chance to defense it. And one out single for Seth Smith. We saw Lynn do this yesterday when he hit a ball just shortstop. This is off the end of the bat. It looked like it was a changeup, and it just he couldn't have rolled it any better down there. It'll go as a hit by the time Ramirez retrieves it. So a one out single. And it will bring up Robinson Cano. Stairs ball one Cano off to a great start especially in the power category with five home runs in fact five of his first seven hits were the home runs. <laughs> he saw he saw the first guy do it so why don't you try it my goodness on the change up again off the end of the bat back to back. Infield singles. This one wasn't even hit as hard as Smith was. And really, there's nothing you can do. Off the end of the bat, you can see where Ramirez was playing. He was going to give it a go to bear him, but I don't think he would have had a chance to get him at first. Wow. You sure that wasn't a replay? So the Mariners cross up the Indians and beat the shift on back to back at bats. As Nelson Cruz steps in. Like the Indians, the Mariners have not been able to come up with a clutch hit so far in this series. Seattle just one out of 16 with a runner in scoring position. And 
Pretty good looking fastball, but it's ball one. Upstairs 2 0. Indians play Cruz about as straight up as you could possibly play a hitter. Straight up in the outfield. And with the exception of Santana being off the line at first, the infield, pretty honest. Yeah, and where he hits the ball, he can hit it out of any part of the ballpark, so there's really no one way to play him. But right now, Cody Anderson having a tough time locating the fastball. Two changeups. There's a good one. The two changeups he just threw to the two left handers off the end of the bat for infield hits. Check this pitch out on our Nissan pitch tracker right there. Challenged him, 95 mile an hour heater, and he swings through it. Another one, and Cruz can only foul this one off to even the count of two and two. So Cody Anderson has plenty of velocity here at the outset. Victim of Perhaps some bad luck. Now well, he'd love to get a ground ball and get out of the inning. Another fastball. Cruz just fouls it off to the right again. Breaking ball and he struck him out. Maybe just a cut fastball. Had just enough movement to get Cruz to swing and miss. And there are two down. Let's check out the sequence here to Cruz. He comes up and he's going to miss early with a couple of fastballs up and in. Backs him off the plate and then he comes right down a 2 0 hitter. He swings through. He fouled one off. Fouled another off. That was uh, sinking in and then cuts one away on a beautiful pitch and he gets the strikeout and a big second out here in the first inning. Now up comes Kyle Seeger. And he oh, squibs no. one to third. Ramirez beats him to the bag, and the inning is over. Finally, Jose Ramirez has his say, and the inning comes to a close. No runs, two hits, two left. The Indians are coming to bat. Today for the Indians presented by Progressive. Rajay Davis going to lead it off. Jason Kipnis batting second. Francisco Lindor hits third. Then it's Carlos Santana. 
Marlon Byrd will DH. He'll back clean up. Then Jose Ramirez. Lonnie Chisinau in right field batting seventh. Roberto Perez gets the start behind the plate. He'll bat eight. And Tyler Naquin batting ninth. Today's Northern Ohio Hyundai starting pitcher, Nathan Kearns, the 28 year old right hander, making his 34th career major league start, his third this year. He has a record of one and one. He's pitched 10 innings, given up 12 hits and five runs, a couple of home runs. He struck out 13. He's walked five. One and one in his career against the Indians. Sort of a fly ball pitcher. He's, he throws, he can throw that high fastball. If the Indians can get on a couple of them. Rajay Davis one out of three in the series with a run batted in. Came on as a pinch runner last night. That caught in a rundown and was thrown out in the eighth inning. Hit hard. That's extra bases. Down into the left field corner it goes Davis on his way to second base. And he'll pull in with a leadoff double. Great way to start. Second double for Rajai. Pulls this one. That was a high fastball. He was able to get on top of it. Pulled it down into the corner at 92 miles an hour. Gets it past Seeger. So now the Indians will start. Exactly what we talked about. Runners in scoring position. Two for 15 in the series. And up comes Jason Kipnis. Rajay takes good lead at second base and Carnes concern immediately. Well he knows this is the one guy that can take off and run at any time. On the year he has an ERA in the first inning of a 1350. Enters six for 11 off and make him seven for 12 now. Kipnis takes low. Ball one as we take a look at our Kia in the driver's seat. This afternoon, Jason Kipnis four for six against this right hander. Off speed pitch is low, two and oh. Boy, you can see how they're pinching at shortstop. Marte is right in the back pocket. Of Davis. He doesn't want to give him a walking lead whatsoever, and that's how you can control guys from trying to steal third. He's staying right there. Close, but no cigar. 3 0. Bullseye with the fastball. And it's three and one. Carnes has walked five in his first ten innings this year. Now we talk about it when you have a starter, and they do on the ropes with just one hitter. They're going to have opportunities. Get them early. Slow hook and it's called a strike Kipnis not so sure but Lance Barksdale raising the left arm and it's a full count. Well it's a breaking ball that's not one you're going to swing at as a hitter in a 3 1 count and you can see that's on the very outer edge if it is on the outside part of the plate so he gets the call but that's not one you're going to swing at as a hitter. The payoff pitch is fouled right back game of the heater. Sometimes the old theory in baseball, if you throw it 3 1, you'll throw it 3 2, but well, it gives him an opportunity to pull the ball, and that's what he's up there to try and do, especially when in 3 1 count. I think they just wanted to surprise him, and they weren't going to give him a fastball. Again, the 3 2. There's the curveball, and it's pulled foul against Sandy Alomar. 
Dances out of the way. <laughs> Somebody lost their lid. Well, he went for his glove. That's his glove also. Hat, his glove. I'll give it back to him. He's trying to catch the souvenir with it. Oh, and he gets the ball. He got the bonus. Sandy, get out of the way. Again, he jumps out of the way. And here comes the defensive play. Just hit a little too oh, hard no. for the sombrero. He just knocked the glove right off his hand. It sure did. Again, a 3 2 pitch to Kipnis. High fastball, and he swings through it, one away. This one uh, might have been out of the strike zone, but he got him to chase. That's where he will get a lot of swings and misses, is Carnes. That's why I say he's a fly ball pitcher. Elevated the fastball, little out of the strike zone. He gets Kipnis to swing and miss. Out number one. Oh, that's nice. He got a bonus and he goes back and gives it to a young man. Good job. Well, Francisco Lindor steps in. It's four for seven in the series. Trying to give the Indians an early lead. Well, he has a look at it now, so you're not getting Davis. You, you might have had him the first time. And he knows that inside move. And Lindor with a liner to right, but right at Smith, two down. Let's check out that Mariners defense behind Carnes this afternoon. Aoki is in left, Martin in center, Smith over and right. It'll be Seeger at third, Marte at short, Cano is at second, Lind at first, Clevenger behind the plate. Up comes Carlos Santana with a runner at second and two down. This was an area where a year ago Santana excelled. He led the Indians with 32 two out RBIs last year. Again, the inside move, but Davis back safely. I like to see him going back to second, two feet first, where they can't drop the knee down there on you. There's really no reason for him to go anywhere now. You're in scoring position and have been. All left-handed hitters. I think he probably knows by just taking an extra step or step and a half, he can maybe get under that pitcher's skin just enough to oh, yeah. shake that confidence. Or not confidence, but concentration. Santana checks on a fastball for a strike one and one. Just missed yeah, inside. Pretty good pitch. One well, you see Santana do that a lot on fastballs inside where, he, you know, he, he sort of jumps back and he's looking away, you know, and that's a strike. That that pitch right there, I think, is a strike. He didn't get the call, but it was a good pitch. Hey, there you go. He's, he's looking for everything away and he's trying to pull the ball. Looks like a changeup, elevated. And you can see it just doesn't get there. He's way out in front. Two balls, two strikes, two down, a runner at second here in the first. Fouls it off. Santana mentioned it uh, yesterday during the game that he's averaged 80 runs batted in over the last five years. But off to a slow start in the clutch, just two out of 13 with a runner in scoring position. Carn 
Jones fires. Santana pops it to left. Aoki is there. And the inning is over. A leadoff double, and Davis never moves from second base. Baseball is live with MLB.com at Bad App. You can stay connected all season long with radio broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet. Leading out for Seattle is Adam Lynn. Two for eight in the series. And that's a little one and one and one to count. Line the left. Hit for the Mariners. All three of them, or all, yeah, all three of them have gone the other sure. way. This is the first legitimate knock. -down. Yeah, this this uh, they hit decently and went the other way. The other two in the first inning off the end of the bat. There's Smith. There's nothing you can do there. That just rolls in, and then Cano comes right back up after that. And then you're going to see the end inning. Seager ends up grounding out the same way. At least Lynn hit the ball hard the other way. It wasn't off the end of the bat. He went that way and tell you what he had a base hit going the other way yesterday when they vacated shortstop. Leonis Martin was thinking about a bunt but he pulled it back quick. Boy the way they're going right now instead of shifting them to the right side you better put Kipnis on the left side with all the left handers hitting them the other way. Or at the very least just keep Ramirez right where he's at. Hard to say that you're going to hit him off the end of the bat every time. The 1 0 fouled back. Some sprinkles starting to fall here at Progressive Field. We had rain earlier this morning. That wouldn't say it cleared up, but at least it stopped raining. That's supposed to be here like this all day with the chance of. One one. Nice. That time he pulled the string and swung through it. One and two. Adam Land at first where Santana holds him. Uh -huh. 
Strike three called. Painted the inside corner with it. Second strikeout for Anderson. One away here in the second inning. Little fastball in the inner part of the plate. See if it has a little comeback to it. Yeah. yeah. You aim, it, you aim it at that front hip. You know, that almost looked like. Am I right? Up. That's a change yeah. up grip. Yeah, it was. And it came back. It sure was. But you, you think of that change up being a pitch away. Instead, yeah. he threw it in. Well, I like it had that. the movement. It yeah. had the movement. But you don't want to miss with that pitch, uh, you know, no. out over the plate. But he did. He, he made a perfect pitch. You miss in the middle, that's a BP fastball, right? Yeah. Yeah, with two strikes, hitters sometimes have a tendency to shorten their swing and then it speeds them up, you know, a little bit. When it's away, they have to reach for it and sometimes they're out in front. That's. Runner goes and on the hit and run, it's fouled back. Yeah, definitely the hit and run with Lind running. They're down at the bottom part of the lineup. They're figuring Clevenger is going to put the ball in play, but he fouled it straight back. You wouldn't start Lind unless you believed that guy was going to put it in play. Tried to hold up. Did he go? The appeal. He did hold up. Boy. I thought from here, Rick, it looked like he had gone around, but now the, the count tips in his favor. He, okay, I, I think he held up. I, I think he checked it. Hit a ton. Deep right. Back is Chisholm Hall, and it's gone. It's the fifth home run given up by Cody Anderson. A two run shot, and it gives the Mariners a 2 0 lead. Well, that was the changeup again. And you could see he was uh, out in front of it a little bit, but he kept his hands backing up and he pulled it down the line. Clevenger, his first home run of the year. And Seattle will play from in front. See that one was inside and it speeds him up. He kept his hands back nicely there. So 2 0 Seattle. 18th home run hit by the Mariners. Cattel Marte takes ball one. Swings through it one and one. And that's fouled back. One ball, two strikes with two down or with one out here in the second inning when two runs in for Seattle. The second Kipnis flips it over and there are two away. We'll go to the top of the order now. Nori Aoki. Boy, it's interesting, Rick, that I almost wonder if Clevenger was looking for that pitch because the left handed hitter before Martin got him out with that change up inside. Well, the difference. Was Martin had two two strikes, strikes. on him, and, and Clevenger had the count in his favor. So two one, you're looking for maybe something middle in to turn on, and he got it. You still have to stay back. You still have yeah. to hit it, and he, and he did. You know. But I'm just wondering. And I know what you're saying about the count, but the element of surprise is kind of gone when you see the guy right in front of you. If yeah. you're watching yeah, his I mean, at bat. You sure are. You should watch every left hander's at bat from the very first time they walk out of the dugout. Does this one come back? It might be playable. Ramirez is there. He's got it. And the inning is over. But Steve Clevenger knocks one out of the park. Seattle on top 2 0.
Eight season tickets still available and include eight different plans. When you buy a prorated 20 game plan, you'll get up to 12 games for free. Visit Indians.com season tickets for more details. Seattle with the early 2 0 lead. And Marlon Bird will lead off here in inning number two. Bird, Ramirez, and Chisholm. If you missed it earlier on Indians Live before the ball game, Andre Knott was talking about the Indians kind of approach the, the mentality that the club was trying to look for early in the season to try and get off to a better start this year. You know, there were some clips sound clips uh, one from Jason Kipnis in particular talked about you know maybe early in the season it's bunting a guy over it's doing something little to get a run in that could be the difference in the game and Andre said they were frustrated after last night's game because they didn't execute the fundamentals some of the little things that could have squeezed a run across and already here first inning Rajay Davis gets that lead off double and they don't move him to third base now I know you don't do it every time I mean it'd be an easy game if every single time you execute well, you, you can't but, but consistently but that's where in these tight early season games you, you've got to try to scratch out those runs well, a liner and it's snared by the shortstop Marte one away no, oh, nice play. Right into the tracks. Bird hit it right on the nose. Uh, not much you can do. Line drive. He thought he had a base hit. Marte flags it down. Snow doing it, but he held on. You know, when you this team, the, the Indians, like a lot of teams, and Seattle too. Seattle, I mean, they were one and five in one run games up until winning that one last night. They're in the same boat. A lot of teams are in the same boat. The Yankees aren't hit with runners in scoring position. You have to do the little things if you want to win the run one run ball games if you're going to consistently play them and I think the Indians will be a team that plays a lot of them along with many other teams you have to find ways to do it and last night Jose Ramirez you know again I'm not trying to put the blame on any one person but he's up there trying to bunt a guy over he bunts it right back well, to the pitcher and it kind of blows up in your face it happens all year long this one's up the gut backhanded. And the shortstop Marte throws out Ramirez two down. Take a look at the injury report brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk and Michael Brantley last night three for four with a double and a run batted in. He'll play back to backs okay. Friday Saturday and then maybe all goes well. Everybody knock yeah. on wood. We'll see him uh, Monday in Minnesota. Well it, it certainly w would help this lineup. Lengthen out a little bit, get him right back into the number three hole where we're used to seeing him. Lonnie Chisinau takes a strike. Lonnie 0 for 3 in a season debut last night. Last year hit 246 with seven homers, drove in 44, had 19 doubles. You know, you, you talk about doing the little things and, you know, to me, hitting with runners in scoring position is a mentality. It, it's, a, it's a thought process to get it done, and, and whatever job you have to do, you have to do it. And, I, and like you say, you're not going to do it all the time, but you have to find a way to get it done. Nathan Carnes breezes through the second, and it remains 2 0 Mariners.
Thursday afternoon. To stay tuned later in the game for Miller time. It's brought to you by Miller Lite. Seth Smith will lead off for Seattle here in the third. Out yes, right in the foot. Foot is right. Looked like a curveball coming in from Cody Anderson. He couldn't get that front foot out of the way. It caught him right on the front foot. He's got a little protection there for a ball he fouls off, but that might have helped him in that situation. But he will take first base, hit by pitch. The first hit batter for Cody this year. Robinson Cano takes its ball one. Through a low fastball. One and one. Cano is six time All Star. Five consecutive years he was the all star starter at second base. Five times he's captured the silver slugger. A couple of gold gloves. And a strike called. Like you, he was a pretty good basketball player in high school as well as baseball. Now, overall, he's a very good athlete. He always uh, seemed to swing the bat well when he walks into progressive field. Even when he was with the Yankees, he would do a lot of damage. To left field, Rajay Davis will make that catch. And back to first goes Seth Smith. Well, let's go back to last inning, and you're going to see the tale of two different same pitches. There's the changeup. He goes in with two strikes. He gets a called strikeout. The exact same pitch in the next hitter. On a 2 1 count, gets hit out of the ballpark, and Seattle takes the lead. They're in the same spot. One takes it, the other one stays back and hits it. I don't know if the, the, the count had anything to do with it. Well, that was my question to you. Is it simply the count, or is it that the element of surprise was gone because you assume Clevenger was watching the at bat of the guy right in front of him? Yeah, well, then he, if he was looking for it, I guess Clevenger would be the only guy to tell us he mm -hmm. was sitting on a 2 1 changeup in that same spot. That he saw the pitch before. Some hitters, I you know, I've talked to him over the years. Some hitters will go into it bat. I don't know about first time up, but they will sit on a certain pitch looking for it. But you still have to hit it. I mean, yeah, you may get right. it. You may get it in the same location, but you have to hit it. Number of times hitters get a pitch and they they foul it off. How many times does a guy go up and say, I'm looking for that first pitch fastball? I'm going to get after that first fastball and you get it and. Yeah, you don't hit back it. to the screen instead of out in the green grass somewhere. Nelson Cruz down on strikes his first time up. 
That was a really good sequence by Cody Anderson through the fastball by him and then struck him out with a cutter. Well, and you know, he was behind him 2 0 in the first at bat, too, and he came back to get him. He's behind him this at bat 2 0. But you know, with dangerous hitters, you don't want to make mistakes when you fall behind. Came back to get him in that first at bat with a nice sequence. We showed it to you. That ball hammered yeah. deep left. Davis back in, can't get it. Play it off the wall. On his way to third goes Smith. The throw to second base, and they got him. Got him. Cruz tagged out by Kipnis. Good cut by Lindor and a great redirection to the bag to get the trail runner. Smith, well, I thought aggressively. Got himself to third base because Davis played it well off the wall. Yeah, and that's the thing. He played it well. You see, he messed around in there and he got hurt with a fastball, but Davis got it right to his cutoff man, Lindor. That's why you get the out at second base. You hit the cutoff man, two good throws, you get him. You know that you normally Smith knew that ball was not going to be caught, so he could take off. But they hit the cutoff man, they get it into second base, you get Cruz trying to get to second base. So a big out right there that helps Anderson. Great job by Alan Porter, the umpire. He was in perfect position. You could see him, he had his head down on the play. And a quick call. So there are two down with Smith at third base now. Seattle already with five hits. That's a pretty big out right there instead of second and third and one out. We have two outs now and the runner at third. Well, I don't know if this is cause for concern because we know Cody Anderson is a guy that pitches to contact, but in 13 innings now, that's 25 hits. Yeah. Or no, I'm sorry. 20, 20, 20 hits, hits in his 13 innings of work. Well, there was a fastball. He, he fell behind him the first time, like I said, you get him. But with dangerous hitters, you can't keep falling behind him. And Jason Kittness will throw him out. Nice job by Cody Anderson to work out of trouble here in the third, keeping it a two to nothing ball game. Ohio is back and includes your first drink. Grab some friends and catch the game from the corner or the new drink rails in left field. District tickets available only online at Indians.com slash district ticket. Roberto Perez going to lead off here in the home half of the third. Then it will be Tyler Naquin followed by Rajay Davis. A little bit outside with the fastball. <laughs> 
too high. And the count 2 and 0. Oh. Roberto Perez. Not a lot of playing time so no. far early in the campaign. He's 0 for 4 at the plate. Just his second start. But then again, that's the way it has gone, you know, with weather wise and with off days. He's not going to get a lot of playing time until you get the day games after night games and after Gomes gets into a pretty much a rhythm. So you got to do the best you can given the playing time. Checked on a ball that misses. Three and one. It's one thing you like when you're not getting a lot of playing time. You get the count in your favor where you can at least sit on a pitch and you don't have to protect early. Ball four. Lead off man aboard for the second time today. Before Tyler Naquin makes his way to the plate, let's go downstairs to Andre. You know, we talk about the month of April, Matt, and you're talking about the Indians trying to get off to a great start. For Nathan Carnes, it's been interesting. In his first start, uh, Chris Adonetti said he's very fastball dominant. It worked out for him, but they talked about trying to mix other pitches in. Second start was off speed dominant. He said today we want to try to get him to do both. It's worked for him, but it's, it's just interesting that a younger pitcher like him is trying to find his place. Didn't throw a lot of off speed his first start, threw a ton of it last start. So far, it's been mixed, it's been mixed pretty well the first couple innings. Well, he throws a lot of high fastballs, and he takes you off of that with a curveball right there. You know, for, he tries to throw for strike one. He also has the changeup. But he's not overpowering, but a guy that he's going to try and make you put it in play. Quick little meeting here between Patel Marte, the shortstop, the catcher Clevenger, and Carnes. Made two starts against the Indians last year when he was with Tampa. He won his first one on June 19th, where he only went five and a third, gave up six hits and just the one run. He left leading two to one, and then came back to Cleveland, six innings, nine hits, two runs, and took the loss. Got beat two nothing. But he was a rookie last year. He led rookies with 26 starts, 147 innings, and 145 strikeouts. Just two for nine first pitch strikes this afternoon. Tyler Nakwa gets a breaking ball, bounced it short. Martinez second one, Cano turns a double play. Well, he comes right back and gets what he was looking for the ground ball to an infielder. 6 4 3. Cano turns it well. Marte gets it to him in time. Top of the order, and here's Rajay Davis. the catch. We played three at Seattle two Cleveland nothing.
fourth inning. Got some large school groups in attendance here today. It was weather day. Channel 3 weather day at the ballpark. They picked a nice day to have it here. Had a lot of weather to precipitation. talk about. Yes, they do. One problem for Cody Anderson here in the early going, Rick. First pitch strikes. He's only thrown two of them. And he falls behind again here to Adam Lynn. Well, he's a guy who normally pitches to contact. And in the in the first inning, I, it felt like, you know, maybe when that fastball was hitting his last start early in, in the count, and he wanted to make sure he, he makes a perfect pitch and you fall behind. But much more effective as as all pitchers are when you can pitch ahead in the count. Line to deep center. Nick went on the move. He won't get it. He does cut it off, however, and he'll hold Lynn. That's to a, a long leadoff single. Well, boy, you get to that ball, and that looked like it had double written all over it. And the next thing you know, you cut it off and you hold him to a single. Good job. That pitch was upstairs. They've been hitting the ball hard now off Anderson. I mean, hitting it right on the nose, and there's Naquin cuts it off on the first bounce, gets it in, holds him to a single. Good job. Leonis Martin out on strikes his first time up. He was the guy that looked at that changeup for a called third strike in the second inning. And he goes hacking at the first pitch, and a fastball fouled right back. Foul back on a fastball. It's 0 2. Told you earlier, Seattle at 6 and 8. Only two and a half games off the pace in the AL West. The Indians at 6 and 6. Also two and a half games back. Chicago, the surprising White Sox at 10 and 5, lead the Central. Followed by Kansas City and Detroit. Now the 0 2. Back out of play. Minnesota bringing up the rear in the AL Central. They lead the majors already with 11 losses. Seven games below 500. And Martin down on strikes. There's that changeup he got down and away. So the second straight time to get Martin. Our great clip of the game from last night, Danny Salazar. Hard to argue with what he did. Gave up two runs, and it cost him the game. But all in all, seven innings, seven strikeouts, 114 pitches. Yeah, Danny was good again last night, no question. Steve Clevenger knocked the two run homer out in the second. Clevenger was one for 10 to start the year at the plate before that home run. Well, you can see now the hard stuff going away. He left him a change up on the inner part of the plate that he was able to turn on. This time, jumps ahead of him 0 2 with two good fastballs. Paint the outside corner and just missed. You watch the hitter before he got a strikeout on that pitch. Clevenger ends up depositing that one into the seats. Made it a two nothing game and that's where we stand. This time the change up beyond the reach of Kipnis and into right field for a base hit. Did you see how Clevenger was able to take the hands back? Yeah. That's the difference in getting that base hit. It looked like he was fooled on the pitch, but watch his hands. 
He was able to keep him back enough to get enough of this ball to get it over the head of Kipnis. He just didn't try to pull it. He just he kept that the bat in the hitting zone long enough to just get enough of it up over the glove of Kipnis. So Lynn goes to second. They have first and second now with one out, and that's hit number seven. Not that they've all been hard, but they, they've hit uh, uh, some balls on the nose that were at some Indians players. Well, Cattell Marte with two on one out, taking its outside ball one. Light rain falling, and out goes Roberto Perez to have a chat with Cody Anderson. Cody's made 59 pitches and 37 of them have been for strikes. But he's had traffic in every inning. There has not been an easy inning for Cody yet. As Rick said, not all the hits have been hard. Not in that first, first inning, couple right. Of balls hit off the end of the bat for singles. But second inning gave up the two run homer. Third inning he let off the inning by hitting the first batter, Seth Smith. Then got an out thanks to a great throw yeah. from the outfield. That's right. He was bailed out in that inning by his defense. Cattell Marte can't catch up and it's two and one. Two one hit toward first by Santana. Chisholm charging, and they'll hold the runner at third. The bases are loaded. Well, I know Lynn can't run very well, but he he had a terrible jump. Chisholm got to the ball and got it in quickly. But boy, you talk about slow. He's very slow. It looked like that ball deflected off Santana's glove, so they can only move him up one base. And now he's in a heap of trouble. Bases loaded. Getting back to the top of the lineup for the third time here in the fourth inning. Well, adding to perhaps the degree of difficulty is now any ball that's hit on the ground to any fielder, infielder, outfielder, it's going to have some Moisture. slickness to it because the the rain has been falling steadily here. Not to mention the base runners are going to have to be sure of their footing too. Well, the infield still looks okay from here. Then again, we're not on that field. We're not down there. I don't think it's going to affect Lynn. He's a straight ahead guy. <laughs> He's kind of. Ground ball base hit right field. Ioki drives home Lynn. Clevenger stops at third, and the bases are still loaded. Four hits in the inning for Seattle. And they lead it. Three to nothing. And nine hits. They're finally starting to get some hits with runners in scoring position. It's middle of the plate. A ball down. That's a lot like the pitch he hit last night off Salazar. But he finds the hole there. They all move up a base. They remain loaded. Four hits in the inning. And out comes Mickey Callaway so they can get that bullpen up and throwing. Right now, Anderson. Has been, uh, he's had base runners all over the place in every inning. Bauer up, just starting to get loose. So he'll have one second before that 30 second timeout for the pitching coach to go out there and talk. And for Bauer, you better hurry up because you can't afford to get behind much more. Already down three. Be a little while before he's ready. In the meantime, you got Seth Smith and Robinson Cano and Nelson Cruz. And this is where the game could get away from you in a hurry if you're not careful. Well, he'd love, I mean, he needs a double play ball right here. First pitch strike.
Smith a base hit in that first inning. Just a little dribbler the other way. Hit by a pitch in the third. Out of play, left side. 0 oh 2. Well, there's a good thing. 0 oh 2. Well, you might be able to get him to expand the zone. Take a punch out. Love the ground ball double play, though. Stairs with it. One and two. Out of Seattle's nine hits, eight of them have been singles. And then the one two run homer that gave him the early lead back in the second. It's going to be like this all day long, too, as far as weather goes. Now low, two balls, two strikes. Now the 2-2, two -two. and that's down and in in a full count. Oh boy. Well, from 0-2 to 3-2, two -two, and he's missed the last couple of times with some change-ups down and in. Well, he's going to have to throw a strike here. They, I mean, they look locked in. They look like they're seeing it very well coming out of Cody Anderson's hand. He's not fooling many guys. Rain falling at its heaviest to this point since we started the game. And on the 3 2 pitch, it's fouled back out of play. Well, Seth Smith got a chance to really open it up for Seattle. And Cody Anderson's just trying to hang on for dear life. He's at 70 pitches already. Bauer's got to be pretty close to ready. Again, the 3 2. And Smith almost took out his third base coach, Manny Active, fouled it right by him, chopped it over his head. You know, the other thing I noticed, Rick, too, with regards to the weather, when we started this game, the flags were just, they were not moving at all, just down on their, at their sides. But that wind has picked up, it's blowing out. So, Maybe that's why we're getting a lot more rain all of a sudden. It's really coming down pretty good. Yeah. There you go. It's a good call. Seth Smith steps out and out goes Roberto Perez. They can't get on the same page. Smith wants a dry towel from the dugout. Yeah. The Probably helmet. to wipe the bill of his helmet off. Yeah, the helmet, the bat, barrel of the bat, your arms, it's you can see. It's affecting. Just about everybody out there. Well, this is a big, big hitter for Anderson. Bauer looks to be ready in the pen. Cody Anderson, long look in, he's ready. Again, the 3 2. Smith in the air left center Davis moving over he'll make the catch tagging at third Clevenger's coming on Davis's throw gets to the cutoff man but Clevenger scores easily and it's a four to nothing Mariners lead with two down. Well gets enough of That's it gets the it. job done and uh, Terry's seen enough he's going to go to the bullpen. Yeah, he let Bauer get ready and. We are going to see Trevor Bauer. So Anderson with a rough start this afternoon, three and two thirds innings. He gives up nine hits, four runs, and obviously he'll leave responsible for the two aboard. 
The Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen is for Trevor Bauer. He's coming on when we come back with Seattle in front, four to nothing here in the fourth inning. Seventy two pitches here this afternoon but some of them were in bad spots today. Well you, you look at the location of some of these too much of the plate and you know he was pitching from behind a lot of the hitters where normally he goes out and gets strike one. He wasn't very good on strike one today. Five times he was able to get strike one and they I mean the balls they didn't hit hard they they got a few base hits so he struggled. Struggle today nine hits on his three and two thirds innings and Bauer's going to try and get out of this inning and keep it just a four run lead. Mariners at first and second with two down. And Robinson Cano the hitter taking ball one. Marte at second, Aoki at first. And it's 2 and 0. Oh. Bowers done a nice job coming out of the bullpen, but again, this is a a new role for him that he's trying to get used to. Well, it's the first time it's been early in a ball game he's been in. Yeah. Normally it's been later on. But the same thing applies when you're coming out of the bullpen you basically have to throw strikes coming out of there you can't afford to walk hitters especially when you come in, in a situation like this with runners on base. No strikes with two on and two out. And that's ball four, and they're loaded. Again. Marte will go to third. Aoki to second. Cano takes the walk, and up comes Nelson Cruz. Now batting for Seattle, the designated hitter, Nelson Cruz. Nelson Cruz struck out in the first inning with two on and one out. Then in the third, he blistered one to deep left. Davis played it well off the wall and then threw him out trying to stretch it to a double. 
So he's had a rough day but here he is up with the bases loaded and two out here in the fourth. And Bauer gets ahead with a first pitch strike. Eight career grand slams from Nelson Cruz. And now Bauer, Bauer and Perez look like they're having a bit of a tough time getting together here. And there's no margin for error either. No, sir, not now. Paints the outside corner. So Nelson Cruz is probably thinking to himself, he just walked Cano on four straight. I take the first pitch for a strike. Now he paints the outside corner. Yeah. I'm in the hole in two. Yeah, I threw a cutter and then goes four seamer down on the way. Two pretty good pitches right there. Two strike pitch. Curve ball, but he couldn't get him to bite. Patel Marte down at third, Nori Aoki at second, Robinson Cano at first. Bauer has so many different pitches it takes a while for Perez to go through them all. Well Bauer wants to throw something after that last pitch is set up that he feels he has him set up for. And it, it obviously he and Perez aren't on the same page. Because you know he can mess with this one and still come back with another one. Wanted to throw something away to possibly set up this pitch. He's got his own thought process here. And the count is two and two with the bases loaded and two down. And Bauer delivers. And Cruz spits on it, full count. Well, now the bad news for the Indians is that the base runners will get a head start. Cano not a burner by any means at first base but he's savvy enough he can run the base as well and he is going to be off with this three two he's halfway to second base Cruz fouling out of play. Try it again. He walked him. Another run in. Five nothing Mariners. Bowers walked the only two he's faced. Yeah, and they had this guy down 0 2 in the count, so. Couldn't put Cruz away. And they continue this inning. Four singles, a couple of walks, a sacrifice fly. It's a three run inning. And it's a five run lead for Seattle. And they're still not out of it because you got another tough hitter in Kyle Seeger. The ninth man to bat in the inning. Seeger is 0 for 2 on the day. Comes Mickey Calloway. Well, there's there's no other help. It's Bauer. He came in with two guys, two guys on. They want some maybe some drying agent, possibly. Yeah, he did slip on one or two, but I mean, you, he should ask for it himself. You don't need the pitching coach to help you. Out comes 
Brandon Kanke and the grounds crew try to do. So it is getting a little messy out there. It's been one long inning here for the Indians while they've been out there on defense. So now the field's getting a little messy and they have to apply the drying agent. Well, while they uh, tend to the mound, let's take a look at our stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Courtesy of Chris Archer last night at Boston, he went four and a third, allowing six runs on eight hits. Walk three struck out six so all of a sudden Archer's 0 and 4 with an ERA of over seven. Well Ouch. look at 30 hits and 19 and two thirds innings. Sure the strikeouts might be there but he's given up six home runs. We saw him and a lot of his pitches are being elevated in the strike zone as well. So he's off to a very rough start. This has been one long inning 25 minutes to this point 37 pitches thrown by Indians pitching. And this is the ninth man coming to the plate for Seattle. They're asking for a hammer because the, uh, the little tool on the back of the mound they used to knock the mud out from their spikes needs to be uh, tamped down. In the meantime, Kyle Seeger will be coming up with the bases loaded and two outs. And Seattle has already scored three in the fourth. And now we should be ready to go again. It is a 1 0 count. Seeger takes its inside. Seeger homered in the series opener. Trevor Bauer out of his 13 pitches, only three have been strikes. That one finds the zone. It's two and one. Seeger shoots this one right back. Stays two and two. And a long inning. Seeger, the ninth man to bat for Seattle. Called once again. Here's the two two. And that missed way inside. Yet again, a full count. Walked Cano on four straight, went to a full count on Cruz before walking him. Now the count full to Seeger, and the payoff pitch with the runners going is hit high in the air to right center. Chisholm Hall is there and makes the catch to end the inning. Mariners get three and now lead it five to nothing.
Baseball is brought to you by Levin Furniture. For the best deals on furniture and mattresses, shop Levin's. And by T-Mobile. Get major league coverage. T-Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE in the last year. Well, the Indians need to get the offense going now. They're trailing at five zip. They've been out hit nine to one. And as we head to the home half of the fourth, it'll be Kipnis, Lindor, and Santana duo. Well, we'll see how Carnes reacts after that seat for about a half an hour in the dugout, although I'm sure he doesn't mind when they put some runs on the board. Upstairs. Now the two one. And Kipna sends the drive pretty well hit deep center back goes Martin and he'll make the catch one away. April in the OH continues tomorrow night in Detroit against the Tigers Indians live with Alan Jensen kicks it off at 630 we'll have the first pitch at seven right here on Sports Time Ohio April in the OHIO presented by Meyer. Francisco Lindor, he takes a strike on the outside corner. Smash the bat. Carnes catches it two away. Lindor does his own housekeeping, picks up the pieces of his shattered bat before he heads back to the dugout. Yep, got inside there and shattered the bat. And it was a soft liner right back to Carnes. For out number two. Santana pops it to shallow center. And charging in, Martin can't get there. And a fall for a bloop single. A couple of bats have been broken by Carnes here in the fourth inning. And the Indians have a two out base runner. Yeah, he just takes the big swing and dumps it into short center field. Cano couldn't get there. Nor could Martin, so it'll fall as a two out single. Only the second hit for the Indians. They had a leadoff double by Davis back in the first inning. They could not advance him or move him. And now this two out single by Santana. Bird hit the ball right on the nose. His first at bat and lined out to shortstop. Marte, who made a nice diving catch. Back by Bird, one and one.
Light rain still falling. Now the 2 1 to Marlon Bird. And he takes. And now the count heavily in his favor at 3 and 1 as the Indians try to mount some kind of a comeback here today. Well, they need a bolt of energy, is what they need. They need somebody to hit one out of here and just wake them up. Upstairs, it's ball four. So two on with two out, and Jose Ramirez coming up. Clevenger, the catcher, out for a quick chat. Carnes trying to get him back on track. Jose Ramirez, a ground out, is only time up. A strike outside part of the plate. And Ramirez fouls it back. He's in the hole 0 2. Well, after that walk to Bird, right back to an 0 2 count. Got to go back to that first inning with nobody out when they had the opportunity with a runner in scoring position. Been a tough series for Indians hitters in that regard. Up and away. It on the ground with the first baseman, Lynn, and inning is over. No runs a hit, two left. We played four. Seattle on top, five to nothing. With Adam Lynn leading off for the second inning in a row. Well, we just uh, recently saw the New York Mets here at Progressive Field, and they were on some kind of tear with the way they were hitting home runs with Conforto and Neil Walker and company. But how about Bryce Harper? He has now hit six home runs in his last eight games. A couple grand slams. He's got there, right? eight for the year. He homered earlier today, but uh, 
Marlins have come back and a three run homer. They lead it three to one. Off to a pretty good start. I mean, eight home runs. We still got a week to go in the month. Swing and a miss. Lynn goes down. One away. In game recap brought to you by the local Toyota dealers. Steve Clevenger's two run homer in the second got the Mariners on the board, and then in the fourth inning, it Came apart at the seams for Cody Anderson. Got into a bases loaded jam. Gave up an RBI knock, a sack fly, and then Trevor Bauer trying to get him bailed out. Walked in a run. Ken Griffey Jr. will go into the Hall of Fame this summer and he's the he'll go in as a Seattle Mariner. It's interesting when you look at Ken Griffey in his career back in 1993 he hit home runs in eight consecutive games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I remember that. And that tied for the all time lead. Is it Dale Long no, maybe. I think so. I was going to look up. Didn't he have an? Didn't he have an April though, where he got off to just a crazy tear with the home runs? Well, I'm sure he did in his career. Foul back. Mariners will retire Griffey's number 24 on August the 6th. After the Hall of Fame inductions in Cooperstown, huh? Yeah. We hit uh, Seattle in June. Four game series, we will play the Mariners this year. Six, seven, eight, nine. Swing and a miss, it's 0 and 2. Two strike pitch. And Clevenger looks at a breaking ball. Oh, in the dirt. he's got him. Good throw by Perez, and they got him at first base. Yeah, he kept the ball right in front of him, and Martin took off like uh, that, which is you know what you should do as a base runner. But that ball didn't deflect away enough from Perez. He was able to jump on it. Watch, he's taken off, and then all of a sudden put on the brakes. He smothered it. It went right near his hand and had him dead to rights. See, he thought, and he said, uh oh, I'm dead. Nothing I can do about it. Starts him off with a curve. He gets him with a curveball to end the inning. Well, that was a nice hook by Trevor Bauer. And the Mariners are out here in the fifth, but they lead it five to nothing.
TV. You can stream them on your mobile device. Just go to the App Store, download the free Fox Sports Go app, log in, stream the Indians wherever you go. Lonnie Chisinau, Roberto Perez, and Tyler Naquin for the Tribe here in the home half of the fifth. Indians down 5 0. They've been out hit 10 2. And Nathan Carnes with the first pitch strike. Rifle foul. Oh, that was also oh close. Yeah, it started out fair, and then all of a sudden, in the last minute, it looks like it. Uh, after 45 feet, it hits in fair territory. Here you can see the ball just foul, not by much. Yeah, Lonnie chases one in the dirt. Home plate, so he's automatically out. Second strikeout for Carnes. One away. Roberto Perez walked his only time up. So I was talking about Griffey. It was 1997. And he set the record for the most home runs in the month of April when he hit 13. Wow. The last three came in one game at, at Toronto. He had two off Roger Clemens and one off Mike Tindler. No kidding. For a three homer game. 13 homer month of April. It's off to a really good start. How many did he hit that year? More on that in a moment. The record leading up to that year was 11. Barry Bonds, Gary Sheffield, Brady Anderson, Willie Stargell, Greg Nettles, and Mike Schmidt had all hit 11 home runs in a month. And then Griffey broke the mark with his 13 homers. The major league record for home runs in any one month is 18 by Detroit's Rudy York in August of 1937. Now that's not a name I'm really familiar with at all. Well, but I went and quickly looked it up. In 1937, after hitting 18 home runs in the month of August, York finished fifth in the home run race that year with 35. DiMaggio led the league with 46 home runs. In. A little bit low, and Roberto Perez has drawn a walk for the second time today. That's impressive when you got a guy that hasn't played hardly at all to be that patient. Yeah, but you remember last year he would find his way to get on base and walk. He, he is patient up there. That's hard to do when you're not playing all the time. Normally you like to get up there and get aggressive as a hitter, but. Our player profile brought to you by Levin Furniture. Talon Aikman, the 15th overall pick four years ago. Good career at AM. And a monster spring training to make the club. Fouled back out of play.
Franklin with a ground ball. It kicks off the heel of Robinson Cano's glove. And Perez will stop at second. And got the base hit there. Hit it very hard. Cano was looking to pick it, but to be denied. So the third hit now for the Indians. Naquin gets a one out single off the glove. It'll send Perez to second base. Back up to the top of the lineup now for the third time here in the fifth. And the Indians have to get something going. Been very quiet here this afternoon. So two on one out. Rajay Davis to the plate. Didn't mean to leave you hanging. In 1997, Griffey finished the second with 56 home 50, runs. That was his 56 homer season. Okay, the 13th month of April. Wire. I think that was the year he was traded. He had 58 combined home runs to lead the majors. Davis drills one in deep left field. Aoki looking up and it is gone. <laughs> it clears the wall and left to the end. A three run jolt here in the fifth inning, courtesy of Rajay Davis. Break out the paddles, man, and that, there it is. That's exactly what they needed. One swing, a three run homer, get a little energy in that dugout. All we had to do Wake was start up talking the fans. about Ken Griffey well, and Mark McGuire what, and home was, runs, and here you go. That's exactly what that was a fastball down the middle. Davis started the game off with a double. He smoked to left field. This one he elevates enough to get it over a mini monster in left field. They are on the board. 5 3 ball game. Just what the doctor ordered. Just did clear the 19 foot wall. Signs of life now. And as the Indians are right back in it, Jason Kipnis takes a strike. Kind of like uh, taking a page from the Cavaliers playbook last night. They had 23s in their game two playoff win over the Pistons. Rajay stepping behind the three point line right there. It's the third home run given up by Nathan Carnes this year. Kipton has quickly erased two down, third strikeout for Carnes. And it will bring up Francisco Lindor. Low and away. Two balls, no strikes. Bounces that one by Sandy Alomar foul. A count of two and two. It's been a pretty good pitch to take him off the, the hitters off the high fastball today is that curveball from Carnes. Lindor just did get a piece there to stay alive. Indians finally getting to the Seattle right hander. Here in the fifth inning, and it all started with a walk to Roberto Perez. Tyler Naquin with a hard ground ball single, and then Davis clearing the wall in left field. Yeah, they needed that to inject a little life, man. Not only in the ballpark, in the dugout. Lindor strikes out swinging to end the inning, but Rajay gets the Indians on the board, down five to three.
2016 season tickets still available and include eight different plans when you buy a prorated 20 game plan you'll get up to 12 games for free just visit Indians.com season tickets for the details. Cattell Marche will lead off for Seattle here in the sixth. He's one out of two singled and scored in the fourth. And Trevor Bauer misses a high ball one. Bauer came on to get the final out of the fourth inning. Struck out a pair in the fifth. This is popped up and this will get out of play. Marte with a nice drag bunt. Oh, good play by Bauer. Quick foot the first got him. Well done by Trevor Bauer getting off the mound to flag that one down and then on the slide able to get rid of it quickly. Well, you try. You're going to have to hit it awful hard if you want to get it past the right hander. Bauer jumps off that mound and catches it as he slides. Able to get enough on it. Yeah, he came awfully close to getting it by him. The drag bunt hard to do. Good play by Bauer. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, Kipnis was charging hard, but you know, from second base, you got a long way to go to get there. I don't know if Jason would have been able to get well, there in time to, to make the play. Right, but the key is to try and get it past the pitcher, you know, and then force the second baseman to make the play. Awfully hard to do if you get it past the pitcher. A little easier to do when the left hander's on the mound. But Bauer made a nice play. He drilled, and that's the second Mariner batter that's been hit on the foot by a pitch today. Anderson hit Smith on the foot back in the third inning, and now Aoki hit here. <laughs> he knew it was coming. He saw it. Try, you, you just can't get that foot out of the way. You can't jump. You're, you're, you lift up that front foot for your timing to put it down. You can't get it out of the way. Smith got hit with the curveball from Anderson on a first pitch. It was a fastball there to Aoki. Now Aoki at first takes his lead. He's been caught twice trying to steal this year. Has not successfully swiped the bag. Certainly want to shut down inning here for Bauer. Smith drives one towards right field. Chisholm will make the head high catch, and there are two down. One little piece of housekeeping here. We were talking about that, that record that Ken Griffey Jr. set with the 13 home runs in April, and I mentioned that the, uh, the record for home runs in any one month was held by 18. Rudy York of Detroit. That's the American League record. The National League record. Was set in 1998 by Sammy Sosa when he hit 20. Wow. Mike Pocket wanted to make sure we. Oh, Mike wouldn't forget oh, about the yeah. National oh. League. There's a high fly ball hit the left and well struck, but back is Davis on the track. He's at the wall. He leaps up, can't make the play. And coming around third, Aoki is going to score. The Mariners get a run right back. Boy, a big two out RBI double by Robinson Cano, and it's 6 3 Seattle. Yeah, Cano flew out uh, to left back in the third inning, but he, he drove this ball. It was a belt high out over the plate fastball, and he gets enough of it to get it halfway up that scoreboard and off the wall. Nothing Davis can do. He goes to leap for it, but with two outs, Aoki's off and running. 
It's the double and they get one back and make it a six to three game. Eleven hits now. And just now Zach McAllister starts to throw in the Cleveland bullpen. Foul right back by Cruz. Now you talked about it. You, you need that shutdown inning when you're trying to come from behind. Yeah, makes it all the more difficult because you just don't have any cushion. Well, yeah, you want to get your your offense right back in there. You don't want to swing. They swing that momentum back now. They feel good about themselves. You know, the Indians finally got on the board. He had two outs, and he makes a mistake. A high fastball out over the plate. Cano hurts him. And Aoki reached because he was hit by a pitch, so he didn't earn his way on. And the one two is grounded towards short. Lindor can't get it. It kicked over his glove, and the Mariners get another run and now lead it seven to three. It looked at first as though Lindor was there to make the play, at least knock it down. But you'll see that ball now that was a difficult hop he wanted to knock it down see if that ball jumped up on him. I think it, it, it bounced a little higher than he thought it was going to. Happen right there and Francona is going to come out and make the move and call in the Callister. As two two out base hits, put two on the board for Seattle and they make it a seven to three ball game. So the Mariners trying to restore their momentum. They're up four. We get a timeout for a pitching change. As he comes on out of the bullpen. Sixth appearance of the year. But the horses have kind of gotten out of the barn. Well, they did here with two outs in the sixth inning. Back to back hits by Cano and Cruz to put it on the board and answer that three run inning the Indians put on in the bottom half of the fifth. You know, they also had a, a run added on in the fourth with two outs. This is uh, the only guy, Kyle Seeger, in the Seattle lineup that doesn't have a hit today. Everybody else is pitched in. A 
And a ground ball with the shift on. What a diving stop by Kipnis, but no play once he left his feet because he was just so far out into the outfield grass. And again, the Mariners had their hitting shoes on it. Well, Kip had to go to his right, and, you know, he's fully extended over there. He couldn't get up, and his only play was first base. So by the time he could stop and maybe get it out of his glove, he realized he wasn't going to get Seeger, so you hold on to it. So now Seeger has a hit, and everybody in Seattle's lineup has at least one knock. Adam Lynn, two hits, two runs scored. Back. This has been Seattle's M.O. on the road. Been able to score. Averaging at that five run mark. Maybe with the seven today they'll be right around that five or a little over. High fly ball to left field and Davis will make the catch. Seattle though comes right back. They get two and lead it seven to three. The Indians try to fight their way back in it. Nathan Carnes. Closing in on 80 pitches, but the Mariners bullpen quiet. Tribe has action in their pen. Three shift to the right side of the infield for Seattle. Santana looks, it's outside, 2 0. That's outside. Three bowls, no strikes. That one in the dirt, so the Indians get their leadoff man aboard and a gift with a walk here to start the inning. Let's go out to the district, see what our boy Andre's doing out there. Not the weather out here, guys. It's still a fun place to be. This is the place you want to come. Hey, when the team returns on May 3rd, you get the Tigers and the Royals here. And even on a day like today, hey, my guy right here, he's getting married tomorrow. 
see where he comes out to the district. Great place to come. Great tickets. Go to Indians.com to find them. You got it, man. Are you invited to the wedding, Andre? Nah, I told him I had to go on a road trip, but I would give him my best to him. You can come in. It's a short drive. I'm coming with you, baby. <laughs> Headed to the Motor City after this one, and after Carnes misses again, quickly out goes the catcher Clevenger, and the bullpen jumps into action for Seattle. Well, you can see how he wants to try and get him out there. They came right back, and after he gave up the three runs. You know they scored a couple gave him an opportunity but he only went five in his first two starts five innings in both starts and that's where he's at right now curveball is in for a strike. And Byrne had a good hack but. Fouls it straight back over the screen. Bird again sends it back out of play. One and two to kill. Strikes him out. That's number five for Carnes, and four of the five strikeouts have come in the last two innings. Comes back and he throws that curveball again. That time it was out of the strike zone. He was able to get Bird to chase after it. Gets the swing and miss, and the first out here in the sixth. Had a lot of hitters swinging at that curveball down in the zone after the high fastball. So he takes the changes the eye level with it. Gets you looking up top and he's able to put him away with a curveball. That curveball low and away. Much that nearly worked out well for Ramirez. Instead, he'll have to go back to home plate and try again. Now that ball starts up, and you can see it slicing, slicing, and into, into that rubberized track and up into the seats. White Sox and Angels just underway in Chicago. No score there in the first inning. Royals and Tigers will be in action later tonight in Kansas City. 2-2, two -two, light left field. That's going to get down. That's going to go all the way down into the corner. Coming into third base is Santana. They're going to wave him home. And the cutoff man misses the throw. And now going to third is Ramirez. He is safe. Now it's going to be a double for Ramirez. 
He gets the curveball. He stays on it and he drills it down the left field line. Sarbaugh being aggressive, sending Santana. The throw is going to be from Aoki a little off target, but the shortstop Marte really it was okay. He dropped it. Look at he wanted to try and throw it home before he had it. He would have had a play at the plate. It would have been close. And by the time Seeger could track it down, Ramirez hustles into third base and gets a hand in there just before the tag. So you give him an RBI double. I don't know what they're going to score on that ball right there, but it looked like Marte booted that ball. And that's going to do it for Carnes. Scott Service has made the move to the bullpen. So we've got a timeout for a pitching change with the Indians on the comeback trail down seven to four. Kids hoping to see the Indians come back in this one. They're down 7 4. They've got a runner at third and only one out. Lonnie Chisnall will be the batter. The new pitcher is Nick Vincent. Nick Vincent making his seventh appearance. Worked a 1 2 3 eighth inning. His last time out four days ago in New York. You're at a point now with the Indians. It's uh, imperative you get that run in from third base with one out here. Make it a two run ball game. You're only in the bottom of the six. So still plenty of time left. They're giving you a run up the middle. Ground ball anything. Back at first. No big deal. Put it in play and there's a pretty good chance you can get them home. And ready. And Lonnie rips a base hit in the right field. His first hit of the season, and it plates Jose Ramirez. The Indians get the two runs right back, and again close the gap to two. Close the book on Carnes. He gives up five. It is five and a third. So Lonnie with the uh, infield back. It's a little two seam fastball. Drills it into right field. Another base hit. It's a two run sixth and it's a seven five game. Roberto Perez taking a called strike. He has walked twice and scored a run.
on the one one. And Perez just couldn't help himself. Yeah. Going around. They asked for help. They say yes he did go around. So now a one two count. Check it out from the side see what you think. I'd say yes. Up and in. Nick Vincent came over from San Diego in a trade right at the end of spring training on March the 30th. It's a time where you see deals like that made. Teams are trying to cut their rosters down. Line right into the glove of Cano. Two down. There's a ball right there. When you're a base runner, you just you have to stay put. Anything on the line, and Chisholm did just that. Time to get back. So good base running. Any line drive is Alomar is going to tell you as a base runner. Hey, line drive. You just freeze. Get back here. Don't let the second baseman tag you. So on the line, Lonnie just kept his ground, able to get back, so they couldn't double him up. It gives Naquin a chance now. Tyler Naquin. Singled and scored in the fifth. Throws a fastball by him, it's quickly 0 and 1. Sixty four degrees and just a few sprinkles still falling here at the ball yard. The 0 1. Make one on the ground, a right to Lynn. That'll end the inning. Jose Ramirez doubles in a run. Lonnie Chisholm drives one home. 7 5 Seattle as we go to the seventh. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk proud partner of the Cleveland Indians call 1-800-ELK-OHIO and by Ford built Ford tough. Seven five Seattle the youngsters hanging around they're holding out hope that the Indians have another run left in them. Well, there's credit. plenty of they game left. Fighting. Yeah, there's plenty of game left. You have to put a zero on the board now for the rest of the way if you're the Indians pitching. Yeah, Leonis Martin leading off. Both bullpens are busy. With this lefty heavy lineup, Seattle's got in there today. Left hander Ross Detweiler up in the Cleveland pen. The 1 0. Good looking pitch. Didn't get the call. Let's do it. Yeah, left handed heavy to where you 
we're going to be heading for the weekend. It's all pretty much right handed dominant in Detroit. So you wouldn't think he'd see much time there. Tigers, Twins, Phillies on the upcoming road tour. The 2 1. To right field. Chisholm Hall broke in and it goes over his head. And Martin on his way to second base. He's in there to lead off the inning with a double. But it was uh, a ball that off the bat, Lonnie felt like he was going to make a, a catch on going over laterally and didn't realize how hard the ball was hit. Oh, yeah. He got, he got fooled on it. That's a gift double. He took off and he didn't realize it was hit a little better than what it was. Gets over the head, so they come right back with a start here. Boy, anytime you have to play catch up baseball, you, you can't give anything. Two base error according okay. to the official score. Okay, so no well, double. he misplayed the ball. You know there is sort of this uh, it, it's a fallacy is what it is that people think that if you don't touch the ball as an outfielder that you can't be given an error that that's not true. It's all up to the official score now a ball that gets lost in the sun. Generally an error is not given because you don't see the ball. Well that's a play that you know you're supposed to make it. And the and, other and one I don't like is the pop up where it could pop up where two guys kind of look at each other and it drops. That's one where okay it's tough to give well, one guy the air. But you know, then that's why I say you, they're starting to change everything in baseball. Give team, a team error. Team error yeah. If you you know what I'm saying for balls like that if, if you have problems and have a communication meltdown then make it a team error but because it is an error the play should be made. Well and because and this may sound selfish but the guy who ends up getting penalized is the starting pitcher. And that, you know, ERA, those numbers they negatively yeah. impact their season. Yeah, but you forget about the ERA and, and numbers. It's an error. I mean, if a play should be made, this is the big leagues, and everybody says, well, you guys are the best at what you do, which they are, and a play should be made, and it's not, then the pitcher shouldn't have to pay for it. Right. You know, forget the numbers. It, the play should be made. So there should be an error somewhere along the line. If you have to, give it a team error if you don't want to give it to one person. Three one pitch out of play. <laughs> that just reminded me of a great story. The three two pitch. Along those same lines. So Tim Belcher was pitching. Um, I don't remember where he was at. I think he was with the Dodgers at this point in his career. And the, he's facing the opposing pitcher in the National League game. Opposing pitcher, it's a little fly ball to left field with a couple of guys on base, and his left fielder fell down. And while he was flat on his back, the ball landed right next to his head <laughs> and bounced all the way to the wall. Ended up being a two run triple. Oh, I bet he would. Oh, have to yeah. This might be playable here if he can get there. Davis makes a nice running catch inside the line before the rolled up tarp for out number one. <laughs> and what Tim was saying, he goes, Heck, the pitcher doesn't, no, you know, that guy doesn't need the triple and the RBIs. He goes, But those two, those are in runs killing me on my ERA. <laughs> goes kind of back to what you were saying. If you, you know, if you had a team error on a ball like that where a ball drops in front of two guys that, it should be caught but it's a miscommunication. You don't penalize maybe one fielder or the other but at least you don't penalize the pitcher on a play that should be made. Yeah it's time to, to bring incorporate I think a, a team error into, into the game. When we go to New York we'll see if we can get you an audience with Joe Torrey. Well, it has nothing to do with me. Marte lines it to Kip. His quick throw to second. Safe is the call as Martin tried to beat the tag of Lindor at the bag. 
Jones. Good job of getting back again as a base run. That ball hit right on the nose. But right into the tracks. Jason Kipnis has it. He's waiting for Lindor. He gets back there, but Marte got his, excuse me, uh, Martin got his uh, foot back on the base. You could see before Lindor could get there. He He's trying to help him out. So two away for Nori Aoki. Pitch in there for a strike. Aoki drove in a run in the fourth with a single, and he was hit by a pitch, came around to score in the sixth. Soggy crowd here at the ballpark today, but at least for the fans' sake, it's not that biting cold wind off the yeah. lake. The wind's kind of out of the west and a little bit out of the south today. So while they're they're uh, a little bit on the damp side, it's not that. Brutal We've seen cold. it, yeah, a lot worse. And it, the rain has been very. You know, at one point today, it was a little hard where they had to come out and put some drying agent on the field. Other than that, it's been okay. Yep. The 0 2. And a foul out of play by Aoki. Well, when I left out of here last night, that uh, the area between the ballpark and the arena was hopping. Yes, it was. It was right before halftime. Yeah. Folks were having a good time. And, and the you know, weather was pretty decent last night at the end of the game. And the two strike pitch. Down and in. Seven five Seattle. We're in the seventh. Zach McAllister trying to put a scoreless frame up on the board for the Indians. Runner goes, and Aoki slaps it foul. Leonis Martin, the runner at second base, he just took off. Yeah, the, the, the middle infielders are back. They're concerned about the hitter. Get that final out of the inning. They're not paying attention to him. So he's going to score on anything anyway. So, uh, you know, guys just sometimes just take off. McAllister. Line drive caught by Lindor. Oh, what a nice diving backhanded stop by Lindor to save a run right there. Maybe a big one. It stays 7 5 Seattle stretch time in Cleveland.
pitcher for the Mariners. Joel Peralta. He'll come on to face the top of the order. You know, came on in yesterday's ball game for an inning. As promised earlier, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Rajay well, starting the game off with a double. He was stayed out on the bases there, but then he brought the Indians right back into the game with one swing of the bat, a three-run home run, back in the fifth inning, gave him a little life. And uh, he's going to try and start it off again. I told you Peralta pitched an inning in last night's game. He walked one, struck one out, and you remember, picked off Rajay, who was in to pinch run. Davis three run homer in the fifth. The jolt the Indians really needed here today. Now right now base runner you get that tying run to the plate. Indians down to nine outs left in this ball game. First two games one run ball games. Both teams had scored four runs coming into today. They had a strike to the outside edge. Now the one one. And now Davis ahead in the count. This guy is a Kind of a test in patience when you face him, isn't he? Yeah. Well, yeah, he's not going to give in to you as a hitter. You have to remain patient. He's going to nibble, nibble, and, uh, you know, he'll change speeds with you. Got the change up, the fastball. He's got a curveball. Doesn't want to throw anything around the middle of the plate. That was a good fastball on the outside part. Davis fouls it off. You know, he doesn't want to throw a strike unless he has to. But you're right. I mean, he's a veteran guy. He's 40 years old. He, you know, at one time he had great stuff. He's throwing about 91 tops, 92, but it's deception. Mm -hmm. And even when you're on first base, he does whatever he can do to just to get you. He's a competitor. Another fastball. Davis trying to belt it to right field, but there to catch it is Smith. One down. Well, kids' tickets start at just $10 for kids 12 and under with the purchase of an adult ticket. And the tickets are located in the family deck out here at Progressive Field and are only available at Indians.com. Jason Kipnis coming to the plate. Been a tough series offensively. Just one for 10. Outside ball one. Wow, way out in front. One ball, one strike. You can see Peralta. I mean, he just. It's almost like a. Kind of a tease it's a game act. of wills. Yeah, that's <laughs> what it turns out to be. You know, as a hitter, sometimes you, you know, you, sometimes you do. You get too anxious. You say, okay, he's going to give in. He's going to throw me a pitch, but he never gives in. He threw the curveball. There's the changeup. You know, that's 81. The curveball's slower than that, but he just never will ever give in. So you'll see. Uh, sometimes young hitters will will get themselves out against a guy like this. Deliberate takes it when he was in Tampa. He was really slow if you remember mm. Walking around the mound he would walk off the mound And Kipnis lines one just over the head of Marte And he comes back 
down on the count to get a big hit to keep the inning rolling for the Indians here. Well, that's a, that's a good at bat for Jason down one two and stayed on it. That ball was elevated a little bit and it just got over the glove of Marte at short. But a good at bat stayed on it. Now you have the tying run to the plate. And one out. That's the seven hits now for the Indians. The first for Kipnis this afternoon. Now here is that young hitter that you were talking about. Can he remain patient against a wily old veteran like Peralta? Starts him off with a curveball and it's in for a strike. Lindor hit a line drive to right field for an out in the first. Hit a line drive, although he broke his bat in the fourth, back to the pitcher for an out and struck out of the fifth inning. Rain kind of picking up in intensity here. Up high. Boy, just after we got done talking last inning about how it wasn't wasn't too bad. But like you said earlier, when when it rained earlier in the game, the wind started to pick up a little yeah. bit, and you, you feel it mm -hmm. like it's coming again. Well, Lindor staying patient yes. as the count tip in his favor now, two and one. Upstairs three and one. Peralta looking down at the mound now, though. Now, I don't know if it has any impact on your landing. He's cleaning off his shoes, but if you know if there ever is a doubt, you have the right to call somebody out and get that drying agent out there. So good hitters count for Lindor. Outfield deep and around toward left. 3 1 pitch. And it was close. Called a strike, full count. Well, look at this pitch. If Reggie didn't like it, I'll tell you, that's could be a gift right there. He thought it was down and away. And that's it. You're not going to swing at that pitch. That's certainly a pitcher's pitch. It's a double play pitch if you go after it. But it was called a strike. Kipnis takes off and the 3 2 is swung on and missed. The throw down not in time. So Never. Jason moves in the scoring position, but there are two away. Yeah, didn't give in. He threw the change up here at 3 2, took something off, put it in a good spot. He got the swing and the miss from Lindor. Kipnis on the, on the play, stole second base, his fifth stolen base. There it is. Change up in a good location. The throw coming down from Clevenger, not in time. Two down, first base open. Santana, the batter, Marlon Bird on deck. Santana walked and scored in the sixth. He had a base hit with two outs back in the fourth inning on a little broken bat blooper to center. A fastball for strike one. Mm -hmm. 
already twice this year Peralta has given up a game tying home run. And now the count of ball and a strike. Well he got ahead with a well located fastball down in the way and it looks like you know he's going to attack him with off speed pitches and see how aggressive Santana is. Carlos the guy that can get the count back in his favor. It's almost you feel like he's going to have to hit an off speed pitch. Yeah. If he's going to get one you know what I'm saying if he, if he can make a mistake with one. The change up there he's not going to give in and give you a fastball to hit. He'll show you that heater and attack with the changeup, and it's a very good changeup. There it is. Turns it over out in front. You may see that pitch out a little over the plate, and he's going to call out his catcher to talk to him about it. Not the everyday catcher, so he just wants him to be on the same page. Yeah, I don't know how much deception is there for the hitter, but I mean, when he it's lets it lot. go, there's a lot of arms and yeah. legs and body There's a lot of deception. Moving. I mean uh, that ball doesn't get there. He throws everything at you. Bottom of the seven. Drive down two. Santana awaiting the one-two pitch. Strikes him out. Ends the inning. We'll go to the eight. Seven-five. Seattle. Presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Seven five Seattle. And here in the eighth inning Ross Detweiler the Indians lone lefty out of the pen. We'll come on to face Seth Smith Robinson Cano and then Nelson Cruz do up third but would we'll probably see Jabba Chamberlain who's up in the pen right now. Well in between innings there. Ground crew coming out to throw a little drying agent around the bases uh, around home plate the pitcher's mound. So it's continuing it's been a little messy today. Yeah this you know we've seen games like this a number of times in our careers as broadcasters you obviously played through a number of these games where it's not raining enough to not play the game but it's raining enough to where after a while it just becomes not fun up. No it, it's it's tough it, but that's part of the elements you think about it, I, I reflected back I was talking with Rick Riz one of their announcers before we remember 2007 oh, yeah. Seattle opened it up here four game series every game got called 
it took them six months and on off days Seattle had to come back and make up an off day and they're not coming back again so they would have to leave on an off day to play here and start a road trip as they did three different times that year in 2007 and even the last game of the year we were the home team in Seattle in Seattle yeah that was it. that was that was rough. miserable well we've already got that same scenario with Boston I mean, Boston's got to come back on an off day to right. make up that game right you know and that's what happens sometimes in the month of April when you get your rain out but that can happen anytime when you have rain or cold weather I mean it just it's not the month of April teams that come in for the the only time yeah you're going to lose an off day we lost one in Chicago but we go back there you know two other times and we're going to make it up on a double header our next trip there in May so it's no big deal. The one one it is a testament though to the the playing surface here at Progressive Field that you know, rained all morning it wasn't raining at game time but it's rained throughout much of the day now but the footing has not been a major issue we haven't seen anybody slip really and fall well the fields nowadays are compared to with all the drainage that they have underneath them it is uh, it's remarkable now and it, it's every ballpark you go to are you saying you may have participated in a quagmire or <laughs> two? Oh boy you know it could not rain for 10 days in that ballpark <laughs> over at the old stadium it used to be wet in July it never got a lot of sunshine to dry it out Franklin Gutierrez fouling it back over the screen he's staying alive here two and two and for the most part you rarely see teams playing with puddles in the outfield anymore where if you go back and, and, and watch footage you'll see a lot of puddles and splashes and things like that that doesn't happen anymore because of the drainage under these fields. It's come a long way. 2 2. Up high full count. I remember uh, you know when they went to the turf fields when that became the rage in the, in the 70s really, really the multiplex really stadiums about is what it was began. yeah. And Bob Prince used to call it the game saver. The Zamboni would come out and suck up all the water off yeah. of the, the, the artificial grass. 3 2 pitch and a foul back. Yeah, instead of putting water on the ice to make it look better and take out all the. Uh, That's basically what it was. It was a Zamboni sure. that Except just. Except you turn, you turn the switch in the opposite <laughs> direction, you'd suck it up. Well, this pays dividends with Gutierrez pinch hitting for Smith because it puts in a better defender out there late into the game. Detweiler walks him. And up comes Robinson Cano. This game would be tied if not for the sixth inning, in which Robinson Cano high off the wall with two outs. Yeah. Got to run back for Seattle and then. Nelson Cruz bounced one over the glove of Lindor. That's true. You saw Aoki came in to score the first run. He was uh, hit with a pitch to get on uh, on base and scored, and it was two out damage by the uh, the Mariners. At that point, the Indians had come back to close the gap to 5-3. Seattle pushed those two runs across to make it 7-3, and then the Indians immediately responded again with two to close it to 7-5, and that's where we stand now in the eighth. Smash to second. Kipnis goes to Lindor for one. Back to first. Double play. And again, on a normal day, that's probably an easy double play. But on a day like today, you've got to be sure of your footing. You've got to be sure of the, the baseball. you got to make sure you got a good grip on it. Well, that ball, he, yeah, it was a little awkward right there. Now, I don't know if that ball came off the turf that way. That's only the fifth double play turned by the Indians this year but that's one they desperately needed right there to get Cano time out for another pitching change as Terry Francona will call on Jabba Chamberlain to face Nelson Cruz when we come back.
to Seattle. Well, whatever they're doing, they're having fun in the ring. Base is empty. Jabba Chamberlain coming on. He's got Nelson Cruz coming up. Chamberlain's fifth appearance on the year. Looking ahead to the bottom of the eighth, it'll be Bird, Ramirez, Chisholm all due for Cleveland. A steadier rain developing now. First pitch strike. Cruz a couple of singles, couple of ribbies today. Hit to third. Ramirez cuts it off. Throws it over. Inning over. Home half of the eighth coming up. Drive down two. Inning. New pitcher for the Mariners is Joaquin Benoit, who worked a scoreless inning with a walk and a strikeout last night. I'm sorry, gave up a hit uh, in his scoreless inning last night. And the new right fielder is Franklin Gutierrez, who came on as a pinch hitter, stays in right field for Seth Smith. Marlon Bird, Jose Ramirez, Lonnie Chisinau do up for Cleveland.
Two strike pitch in and out of the glove. Kind of rare to have a matchup. 38 year old pitcher and 38 year old hitter, huh? Yeah, sure is. With all the youth going around nowadays. Missed inside, two and two. I wonder if these guys, they have ever been teammates with the Rangers? Benoit was there for a while. Down low. Yeah, they definitely were teammates down in Texas. Final back. Well, was putting a good at bat together, making them come in there. Didn't chase anything out of the zone until you get to the full count. Falls off the three-two pitch. And the Indians could use that leadoff man aboard. Not quite a decade ago, these two were teammates with the Rangers. Now in the twilight of their respective careers, the payoff pitch. High ball four. Tying run to the plate now for the Indians the rest of the inning. There's our Yellowwood bringing the lumber back in the sixth inning. Jose Ramirez slapped an RBI double. On the left field line, and then Lonnie Chisinau with his first hit of the year drove home Ramirez. And now that combo coming up back to back here in the eighth inning. Wow, way out in front. He yeah, really off speed. It. Yeah, off some really good change up there. That split. That he throws, took something off, and had Ramirez way out front, who was cheating on the fastball. It, you know, impressive too at 38 that Ben was able to bounce back from, you know, he picked a night game to a day game to be available in the bullpen. I know he only pitched an inning, but still, that's impressive at 38. Well, that's his role, boys. That setup. Early in the year, yes, bounce back. Whether it takes getting tomorrow off or not, but you have an opportunity, and they're trying to. You got to win this game if you're Seattle. They're on a long road trip. They're three and two so far. And after this game, they will head to LA for a three game series before they head home. So, this is a service is looking for a must win right now when you have it late in the ballgame and a two run lead. Two pitch and Ramirez a little check swing roll in the third. Seegers only plays at first and he gets him one away. Bird moves to second base. And Lonnie Chisnall the better. history is an advocate or, or at least uh, some kind of benefit then Lonnie Chisholm at least has the ability to draw on some of those past meetings with Benoit. 
Well, they're playing awfully deep in the outfield because their concern is Chisholm at the plate, not letting him get into scoring position. No doubles. Keep everything in front of you. Chisinau falls down one and two in the count. Seven five the score, even though Seattle has out hit the truck 13 to seven in the game. Big moment in this game, turning point for the tribe anyway. Down five to nothing was a three run homer by Rajay Davis. Up to that point, the Indians had only two hits in the game going into that fifth inning. Strikes him out two away. Elevated the heater with two strikes. Look at they want it upstairs. They know Chisnall likes the ball down. That's a perfect pitch. Especially to Chisnall. He chases it. Can't catch up to it up there. See Clevenger sets up really high. Give me it about the letters that he delivered and he made his pitch and got the out. Well, interesting. Terry Francona is making a move right here. He's going to go to Mike Napoli off the bench. He'll pinch it for the catcher, Roberto Perez. Hit for the Indians this year. First for Napoli. So far, the Indian sitters over three. And Ben Watt misses with ball one. And it's 2 0. Oh. One out of four with a home run for Napoli against Benoit. Benoit, not that he's going to pitch around Napoli, but behind him 2 0 oh here. He doesn't have to give in to him. He's got the rookie make one on deck. Signs shaking off, shaking off, and it looked like he finally wanted to come in there. We'll see what they do. Napoli smokes it to deep left field. Tie ball game. Mike Napoli off the bench with a pinch hit game tie two run tater to the bleachers. It's a 7 7 game. Now well, that's how you get back into baseball games is with the long ball. And he hung uh, Napoli a slider and left it out over the plate. And boy, he deposited that out in left field in a hurry. There it is. Slider stayed middle. He knew it as soon as he threw it. And that's what they did. They restarted. They stepped off. And uh, this is the pitch Benoit wanted to throw. He didn't locate it. Napoli ties this game up. The Indians uh, were down at one point, five zip. It is now a 7 7 ball game. Yeah, 
was a uh, the first hit as a pinch hitter. And that's his first career home run as a pinch hitter in the Indians first this year. So that's. Uh, well used. Well I said it at the time you know Terry Francona is making his move. You know a lot of times you might save your your pinch hitter for the ninth inning. But he liked it whether it was just a matchup situation or just. The way the inning unfolded. He made his move and Napoli. Comes through big time. Ball one strike count now on Tyler Naquin. And Naquin a liner caught by the shortstop Marte to end the inning. The veteran Mike Napoli with a big home run and we're even at seven. Hide it at seven along with Jensen Lewis. I'm Al Palowski, boy Jensen. If you've got one bullet to use, Terry <laughs> Franco to use that bullet at the right time. I wish somebody would have picked him for Impact Indian. That would have yeah, been I unbelievable. Know, that would have been great. One. I'll tell you this though, Napoli bailed out Trevor Bauer in the middle of this game. If you look back and if the Indians hadn't tied this thing, I think Bauer probably would share most of the blame because you've got to be able to come in and shut down the inning. Roger Davis hits a three-run homer. You've got to be able to stop the bleeding, keep that deficit to being a manageable deficit. But hats off to Nap. That's a big blow. Plenty to talk about in Indians Live. No matter how this one ends up, it's coming up right after the game. Brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. Cody Allen's coming on here to pitch the ninth. Let's head upstairs to Matt Underwood and Rick Manning. Gentlemen. Thanks, Al. New ball game as we go to the ninth, and Cody Allen will try to keep it a 7 7 game and give the Indians a chance to win it in their last at bat. Yeah, they come back and uh, bottom of the eighth, tie it up. So bring on the closer. Jan Gomes comes in, goes behind the plate because that's who they pinch hit for was Roberto Perez. How's that day if you're Mike Napoli? One swing, tie the game up, and you're done. Thanks, pal. <laughs> Swing and a ground ball just foul up the first baseline. Well, that was another one that was close. Although Santana was on the line there. Very close. Yeah, you can see he's well into foul yeah. territory. No, doubt. no double down there. Yeah. Staying on the line over there on the right side. Kyle Seeger one for four today, three hits in the series.
Big curveball missed up out of the strike zone. All left handed bats here in the ninth. Do up for the Mariners. Seeger, Adam Lynn, and Leonis Martin. Seeger with a line drive to right field, and Lonnie Chisholm Hall runs it down. One away. Shook that pitch off. He wanted to come back with it. Just look at the reaction of Benoit. As soon as he threw that pitch, the head went down, and Mike Napoli just absolutely loved it. That was he was up there to keep it going, but he hit a mistake out of the ballpark and tied the game up. First career pitch hit home run. And the Indians come right back to tie it. That's very good because when you're in the middle part of this ball game, you thought they had no chance. They were dead in the water. Well, you down know, five nothing, but you get a three run homer and now a two run homer and that's how you get back from big deficits. You gotta have, you have to hit the long ball. It was five to nothing going into the bottom of the fifth inning and the Indians had out been had been out hit at that point ten to two. So there wasn't really any there was no life to think. Oh. Well there was really no life yeah. anywhere. It, was, it, it looked like the weather. Swing and a miss. Strikes it out. Gomes applies the tag. Two down. Good curveball. Gets Lynn to swing over the top. It's out of the zone. Gomes blocks it and then tags Lynn. Out number two. Leonis Martin. Out of four today, and he looks at a breaking ball for a strike. Team two hits in the series. Swung on and missed. Two quick strikes from Cody Allen. Two strike pitch. Check, did he go? They appeal, he did not. Came in there, teased him. He swung at it the pitch before, so Cody says, I'm going to come right back with it. See if he'll chase it again. He did not. A one, two. Swung out and missed. He struck him out with a breaking ball in the dirt. And we'll go to the bottom of the ninth. Rajay Davis has already had a starring role in this one. Will there be an encore?
visit our keys to the game brought to you by Mazda Cody Anderson had a rough go of it today tagged for five runs on nine hits did not walk a better but knocked out after three and two thirds and for the Indians the, the clutch hitting well they got some clutch hits let's put it that way three run homer by Davis pinch hit two run homer that tied the game by Mike by Mike Napoli a couple of big hits in that sixth inning by Ramirez and Chisholm also they've had enough to get them back to even after falling behind five to nothing. Yeah you look at the first two games in this series uh, three to two game one the Indians come out on top two to one Seattle wins game two. So both teams scoring four runs and here you go we're going into the bottom of the ninth and there's seven runs that each team has. Jay Davis ready to lead it off. Davis then Kipnis and Lindor for the Indians here in the night. Tony Zick did a nice job in the uh, series opener. Worked an inning and two thirds scoreless retired all five that he faced. So we will see. What happens here today. Pitch in for a strike. Davis went after it, came up empty, it's 0 2. Yeah. Do that one a little more outside, got him to chase after it after he got strike one. Spectrum way out in front of it almost took out Andre. It's down in Andre's uh, clubhouse. It got him. The 0 2. Just staying alive is Rajay Davis. Tony Zick, the Illinois native, drafted not once but twice by the Chicago Cubs. First time coming out of high school in the 46th round, decided to pass and went to Louisville, and then they drafted him in the fourth round three years later, and he signed. Back towards us, down below. But for whatever reason, the things didn't work out in the Cubs organization. And the Mariners acquired him last April for cash considerations. High fly ball, left field, playable for Aoki. One away. And that will bring up Jason Kipnis, who singled his last time up. Side ball one. Jason Kipnis had a walk off home run three years ago against the Seattle Mariners. Find, finds himself in the hole one and two. Well, I'll tell you what, Tony Zick, he can go from 81, 82 to 94 and 95. 
He can really change speeds on you and have you caught in between, which it looks like he has the hitters going. Down on the dirt. Back to even, two balls, two strikes. Him out, two down. And that will bring up Francisco Lindor, who is 0 for 4 here this afternoon. Is outside for ball one. Well, Zick's got a good fastball. Yeah, he gets in mid 90s. That one, what, 96? Touch 96. Time today that for him, he's had that same pitch called a strike. Yeah, the last not a strike. The last time it was a 3-1 pitch. You're exactly right. This one token 3-0, but that's outside. No doubt about it. Ball four. And Lindor, a winning run aboard with two outs here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Carlos Santana to the plate. He's one for three here this afternoon. Singled with two outs, nobody on base in the fourth inning. Walked the lead off to sixth and came around the score and then struck out. The runner in scoring position in the seventh inning. Have extra innings. Or will Carlos Santana send us home happy? Checks the swing, it's down and in, ball one. At least keep it going. Moving along, you don't have to hit a homer here. The Indians have not played an extra inning game yet this year, while Seattle has played two of them. And it was that guy right there with the big hit to tie this ball game up. Pinch hit. Last inning. Lindor takes off, pitches up and away, and the throw is in time. And we will have extra innings here this afternoon. 7 7 through 9. Lindor thrown out to end the bottom of the ninth.
Francona decided to come out and challenge the play at second base. They went and looked at it and upheld the call, so the inning is officially over. There was some thought maybe that hand beat the tag, but it looked like the tag got to his backhand before the first hand got to the base. Take a closer look here. Does the left hand, yeah, he tagged that left hand. Yeah. Just before the right hand got to the base. So Lindor officially out. So we go to the tenth inning, Rick. We got extra innings. For yes, the first we time do. This year. Yes, indeed. As I mentioned, Seattle has played two extra inning games. The the Indians. This will be their first. And looks like Cody Allen's coming back out for another inning of work. He had a one-two-three inning in the ninth. Fly out to right field and a couple of strikeouts. He's going to come on and face uh, the eight nine one spots. Should be Clevenger, Marte, and Aoki. Well, you look at that Indians bullpen, and because the short outing today, it's getting a little thin down. They got Jeff Manship who's available. Brian Shaw and Dan Otero, that's it in the bullpen. And we got Juan Uribe is the only body left, only body left on the bench. And Manship won an inning in the third yesterday, yeah. when you think about it. So we head to the tenth. And for Seattle. And catcher Steve Clevenger to tell Marte and Nori Aoki do up. Not like tomorrow's an off day either. They've got to play tomorrow, but it won't be until tomorrow night in Detroit. But certainly you would think if he has to use Cody for two innings here tonight, good chance he won't be available tomorrow, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Well, they say. 11 pitches in that first inning, so if he can have a, a, a nice brief inning again. Yeah, we mentioned it at the start. Whoever wins this game wins this series. The Indians could even their record at home on this home stand. In Seattle now, they're three and two after going to New York for a three-game series before coming here. Throw it by him. And Cody Allen ahead of the count, one and two. Two twos in the dirt now, a full count. Tell Marte waiting on deck. Seven seven in the tenth, and the payoff pitch is ball four. Now we'll get a pinch runner for the catcher, and that's going to be Luis Sardinius who comes on to run for Clevenger. For Seattle. Not the best of conditions to run on, but you have better speed on the base. It's not necessarily saying he's going to go out and try and steal a base. So Sardinius at first. He's one out of two in the stolen base department this year, looking at his numbers. Fastball for strike one to Patel Marte, who singled and scored back in the fourth. Ramirez is really coming in at third base. 
playing about four or five steps in in front of the bag. Tried to bunt, but it fouled it right back. And nothing into the count. Two hit pretty hard. Deep center field. Nick went on the run. Makes the catch right in front of the warning track. Turns and fires it back into the infield. Boy, a fine running catch in deep center by Tyler Naquin. See the frustration on Cattell Marte's face. Well, he thought he had one off the bat. It doesn't matter. He had two strikes. He had an opportunity. His job was up there to bunt him over, and it wasn't a very good attempt he tried. And then he hits a ball right on the nose. But Naquin's going to run it down. For the out. One away now, top of the order. And it's Nori Aoki who singled in a run and scored earlier today. Lindor took a hit away from Aoki in the seventh inning with a nice diving stop at shortstop. Tried to block it, but it gets a by him, and Sardinius is now in scoring position with a one out on the wild pitch. Yeah, that curveball, you know, when you call it, there's a chance of it going to bounce, but Gomes couldn't do anything with it. The flex off his body allows Sardinius to get into scoring position now at second. Center again. Make one back, still going back on the track, makes the catch. Sardinius will tag, he'll go to third, but now there are two down. A couple balls hit pretty well to the deep part of the ballpark. Stays in, Naquin runs it down. The only thing this does now is moving that guy to third base. Allen can't, when he throws that curveball, he can't bounce it like he did well, the last time. True, kind of takes that pitch away from well, him. Well, he can throw at it. Least. You just you can't, you know, try and get him to swing at that ball in the dirt. All right, Shaw getting loose as Franklin Gutierrez for the second time comes to the plate. He walked as a pinch hitter in the eighth inning. Comes with it, but it, it kept it up there. You can't really throw it in the dirt and make him try and chase it. That 
It's outside 2 and 0. Oh. with the left-handed hitting Robinson Cano on deck. Not really the guy you want to face. Here in the 10th inning. And Gutierrez knows that, so he may be sitting on something here. Takes all the way and fastball right down Broadway, three and one. Make him get in the strike zone there at 3 and 0. Has to throw three in a row if he wants to retire you. If you're going to be patient. You have to look fastball here. Throw it by him. Full count. Those who remain of the 11,525 who showed up on a rainy Grizzly gray afternoon. Want to see Cody Allen get the Indians in the dugout with a chance to win it in the bottom of the tent. They don't want to see Robinson Cano. The payoff pitch. It's low and he walked him. Second walk of the inning. And now up comes Cano. Cody Allen has already made 29 pitches now. Mickey Callaway is going to come out. Callaway going to come out and they want to talk to the infielder. So Tito and uh, Mickey had a talk in there. Should Gutierrez take off? Your concern here is Cano. He's going to belt out the. Shaw got himself into it. He's going to get. Uh, uh, Allen got himself into it. He's going to get an opportunity to get himself out of it. So all the infielders are on the same page. Cano doubled high off the wall in left field back in the sixth inning to drive home a run. Plus two of his three hits in the series have gone for doubles. In the air, deep center field, make one back, and he won't catch this one. Robinson Cano with a three run homer to straightaway center field, and the Mariners go up by a score of 10 to 7. Now well, they hit their three run bomb and you know a couple of guys hit it to deep center field. It's his uh, first career hit off Cody Allen. Boy he jumped and he was waiting for that first fastball. And he got it and he has the power. The other guys hit it hard that was their best bolt but they couldn't get it out but this guy could. And that's going to do it for Cody Castillo. No more pitches 30 pitch inning. But the big three run home run after the two walks hurt him. Well, I said it at the time with Gutierrez up there when he was 3 and 0. He's like, you don't want to face Robinson Cano in this situation. But he couldn't put Gutierrez away. He ends up having to face Cano and he makes him pay. So the Mariners go up 10 7, and we've got a timeout for a pitching change.
tenth inning and our Pat O'Brien play of the game just happened. Yeah, after two walks in the inning by Cody Allen, that first pitch started off Robinson Cano, and he can't believe it. It went straight away center for a three-run bomb, the first home run hit by, excuse me, the second home run hit by Seattle today, and that was a big one. So that ended Allen's day after 30 pitches. He did went the ninth inning, had a one-two-three inning, but came out here in the tenth and struggled to throw strikes up until that last pitch. Brian Shaw delivers down low ball one to Nelson Cruz. In his decorated career, that's the fourth extra inning home run for Robinson Cano. Cruz pops one up. Lindor, the shortstop, backpedaling, makes the catch. Well, we'll go to the bottom of the tenth. The Indians have come from behind all day long. Can they do it one more time? Tenth inning. And the Mariners closer, Steve Ciszek, coming on looking for his third save on the young season. Yeah, I got uh, save number two in last night's ball game. And uh, had a breeze, came out and was very strong with a one, two, three inning with a couple of strikeouts. So the Indians fought their way back from a five run deficit earlier. Now they've got three to go with just three outs. Santana, Bird, and Ramirez do up for the Indians. Chris Ionetta takes over behind the plate now for Seattle. Santana looks at ball one. Carlos was at the plate in the bottom of the ninth when Francisco Lindor was thrown out trying to steal. Santana lifts the fly ball to left over near the line and Aoki almost overran it but makes the catch one down. <laughs> Tomorrow night from the Motor City in Detroit. When the Indians take on the Tigers for the first time this year, Josh Tomlin against Justin Verlander. We'll have it for at 7 Eastern right here on Sports Time Ohio. Here's Marlon Bird, two walks and a run scored. And he takes ball one.
Ciszek slings it in there for a strike to even the kill. Goes right at him to get ahead one and two. And Bird down on strikes, two away. And it'll bring up Jose Ramirez, who doubled on a run and scored back in the sixth inning. Minnesota leads Milwaukee 4-1. They're in the seventh at Miller Park. Tigers, Royals, they'll play later tonight in Kansas City. And then Detroit will head home to meet the Indians tomorrow night. Angels lead the White Sox 2-0 in Chicago. They're in the seventh inning now. White Sox have just two hits on the afternoon. The silver lining here today is just the way the Indians fought back. It would have been easy to just kind of chalk this one up early the way it was going. Five nothing in the hole. They made a game of it, but the Mariners come back once again and they take the series, winning two out of three. The final score today, Seattle 10, Cleveland 7. Well, you're right. There's not much you could do. They they like we said the first five innings didn't look like they had a chance you know the weather was gloomy it was gray and the Indians offense was the same way until Rajay Davis hit a three run home run to bring him back and when you fall behind like they did today because the short start from Cody Anderson you know you have to do a couple of special things and they did to get back into the game they, they brought it within two that Bauer gave up a couple. But then the offense come battle battling right back to score two more the big pitch hit by Mike Napoli brought him into it. They just couldn't hold it. Your closer gives up a three run homer in his second inning relief. So we'll see if he's going to be available tomorrow. Yeah. And you know one of the bright spots uh, today was the you know off the bench Mike Napoli in a yeah. pinch gets a pinch hit home run ties the game big lift for the club. And um, our guy Tom Boschenek tells us that since Tito became the manager. That's 11 pinch hit home runs for the Indians at second most in the baseball. Wow. So the other Mr. Cavalier on that note here. Today. Yeah, no, no doubt. All right, that's going to wrap things up for us this afternoon. Again, we'll greet you tomorrow night from Detroit. Indians Tigers first of three over the weekend. For Rick Manning and Andre Knott, I'm Matt Underwood. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Indians Live with Al and Jensen is coming up next.